I, I want to get back now just to these voices that we can't hear enough of from this uh, crisis on the border, these young children who have been taken from their parents. Audio of their cries comes from the nonprofit news outlet ProPublica. Uh, it reports these children are somewhere between the years of 4 and 10. Uh, the reporting also captured the words of uh, border agents caring for them. Bueno, aquí tenemos una orquesta. With me now from McAllen, Texas, Border Patrol agent Chris Cabrera. He is also the spokesman for the National Border Patrol Council. Chris, thank you so much for being with me. No, thank you for having me. Listen, I know you're a father. I know you're a father of four. I know this is hard for you, too. Uh, but when you hear that audio where one of these agents refers to the cries of children, he says, tenemos una orchestra, right? We, we have an orchestra. What did you think? Well, you know, I, actually, this is the first time hearing. I mean, I, I, I try and distance myself a lot of, from a lot of this. Um, I, I, I think the, the real issue we need to get at here is we need to solve this problem. Uh, but this Chris, is hang on, hang on. I can't let you off the hook. Now. Hang on, but, but if that, that is the audio, even if you're hearing it for the first time, and you hear this Border Patrol agent saying, uh, speaking about the cries of children, saying, we have an orchestra, and the next agent says, well, all we need is a conductor. I need to have you respond to that. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's probably, you know, I mean, like I said, I wasn't there. I, I don't know. I, and, and, you know, it's, um, you know, they're probably just making light of a bad situation. It is what it is, you know. You can't change it. Hang on, that, hang on, know? hang you on. You can't change but, the but, fact but that Chris, that's what it is. But making light of a bad situation, why should you ever make light of these children being ripped from their parents, period? Well, you know, you know, look at it this way. I mean, I understand where you're coming from. I don't think everybody understands what's actually happening down here. You know, you have a lot of these kids that, that are coming here and put through, through terrible, terrible situations by their parents. They are, they are brought over in extremely dangerous conditions and an extremely dangerous terrain. And all this can be avoided if they just go through the port of entry. There would be no crime uh, committed by them and they wouldn't get separated. Why they don't do this is beyond me. Um, but this problem is very easily solved, at least uh, on the short-term basis, by going through the port of entry. If they choose to go through the river, they're committing a crime just like anyone else. They're subject to arrest, and we all know when you get arrested, you don't get to stay with your family. It's just, it's just the sad reality of life. So I, a couple of things, and I think you're right to point out that the port of entry, I, I think there's so much being thrown at people who, who don't know as much about immigration, certainly as you do uh, as a Border Patrol agent, right? But there are a couple of ways to come into this country. If you are an, an undocumented immigrant and you, you are in the Rio Grande River and you come out on the other side, that is illegal, right? If you are coming across from, yeah, even say... Even if you're a U.S. citizen and you do that, it, it's illegal. It's illegal. It's illegal. If you are coming across, the, the let's say, the Matamoros-Mexico bridge on over to, you know, um, Texas, at the, across that bridge at that port of entry, and you're seeking asylum, that is legal. I know you have to be inspected, and, you, you know, the process needs to be needs to happen to be appropriate. But But the problem is, even in some of those cases... Those families, I talked to an NPR reporter yesterday, some of those families are being turned away. And it's not just a day delay, it's an indefinite delay. Well, and you know, and therein lies the problem. We've had this, this situation going on for four years now. And, and for some reason, we haven't fixed it. I, I don't think you can necessarily blame it on one administration or the other. Uh, it started under one and it's continuing under, under another. It, it, hasn't, it hasn't been fixed and, and it needs to be fixed. Um, right now, we have this, uh, this beacon of, uh, we'll leave the light on for you. You come across illegally and we'll let you into the country. And if, if you guys have seen some of the stuff that we've seen down here, um, you would understand just how important it is to, to have a tough stance to divert people from coming here. Uh, when you see a 12-year-old girl with a Plan B pill or with uh, their, their parents put her on birth control because they know that's getting violated as part of the journey, that's just a oh. terrible way to live. When you see a four-year-old girl traveling completely alone with just her parents' phone number written across her shirt. I mean, come on now, you know, something needs to be done. We, we had a nine-year-old boy last year have a heat stroke and die in front of us. 
uh, with no family around. And, and that's because we're allowing people to continue to take advantage of this system. And, and let's, let's be honest here, if, if we want this law changed, then we need to, that, that's on Congress. That's on, on nobody else but Congress. They need to come in there, they need to get to work, and they need to change this law. Until then, uh, us as Border Patrol agents, we have a duty to, to uh, enforce these laws, and, and we'll continue to do it and, until uh, they change this law, and hopefully they will. No, and just, let me just underscore some of what you're saying. You know, seeing a nine-year-old boy suffering heat stroke, seeing young girls come to you with, with uh, you know, Plan B or, or birth control pills because their parents provide them for them because they know the journey will involve them being raped. This is what you are seeing, and I can't even begin, Chris, to put myself in your, in your you know, in your shoes. But keeping the focus on the kids, you know, America is outraged by what is happening and i want you as you know border patrol agent can you assure everyone watching that you and your for, your, your border patrol colleagues are, are treating these children humanely I, I can tell you with absolute certainty that they're being treated humanely um all, most of our agents are parents uh i've I've seen guys, and I've done it myself, you, you give your last bottle of water to a kid, you'll take a toy out of your car to give to one of these kids because you know the situation they're in. Um, yeah. You know, agents are, are very sympathetic. Um, we're, we're human, we're fathers, we, we, we have families. Um, we, we do a lot for the communities here, whether or not a, a camera is involved. Our agents are very involved, and nobody saves more lives along the southwestern border than the U.S. Border Patrol. And I can tell you for a fact, uh, one of the worst things that you would ever have to do is have to uh, pull the body of a young kid out of the river because they were crossing it and they just mm. didn't make it. So something needs to change so we can we can avoid uh, some of these tragedies that happen. Granted, having these kids in detention centers, obviously it's not ideal, but um, yep. it's, it's, it's far better than, than the alternative of a lot of these kids not making it. Yep. Yes, and and I know you say you know ultimately it's up to you're just you're doing your job, um, but but I know you say it's up to Congress, but actually. It is up to President Trump. I mean, they don't have to separate these children from their parents. That is what's different from, say, under the Obama administration versus now. So, so Chris, just straight up, do you think the president should right now end this policy of separating families? You know, I, I, think, I think you're wrong there. It is a law, and, and the law needs to be enforced. Regardless, if we don't like what, a law, what we just can't decide law? which law we're going... Uh, as far as if you come across that river illegally, you're subject to arrest and, and a prosecution, and you will get arrested and you will get prosecuted. But, if you don't like that the option, then Chris. you can go through the port of entry. L listen, I absolutely hear you, and Say I respect again? that law. I, 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 I hear you, and I respect that law, but there is no law on the books that says if a family comes over illegally that the parents and the children need to be separated. It's a zero-tolerance policy that the Trump administration put into place this spring. That's the difference between now okay. and a couple of years ago. Well, you know, and the thing is, is not every every not every family is getting separated. Um, some are, some aren't. It depends on on the the circumstances. If you have a criminal history, uh, for instance, just a couple days ago, we caught a uh, a guy coming across with his uh, five year old daughter, um, and we had to separate that family. Reason being, he had a criminal conviction, and he was subject to prosecution. He had a criminal conviction for uh, for for rape here in the United mm -hmm. States. So. I mean, we, we obviously we wouldn't want that guy walking free, but we had to no. separate that family. Sure. I, I and what happens to his daughter? Over that one. Sure. No. And I think that uh, yes, she's if you're a placed. criminal, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. What happens to the little girl? Yeah, she's gonna get. She she got. She gets placed in a, in a center until they can find some family that they can place her with, whether it's here in the United States or, or back in her home country. And and you know another thing that that we look at is we get all the time daily that that people are claiming to be family units and they're not. Um, and that's very dangerous for these kids. I, if we don't find those, I mean, what can come of those kids once this adult uh, doesn't have the need for this child anymore? Sure, and I know some children are used as mules, are they not? Some children, Chris, are used, uh, are used as mules. Some, 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 of, some of this is, is nefarious. It's not all just a family. Can you still hear me? Yeah, you know, yeah, it is. You know, some of these children are used like that, and, and it's a shame. And, and I think the other thing that, that needs to be looked at here is we do have a lot of unaccompanied children coming over, and, and the fact remains is the parents are already here in the United States, and they're sending for these kids, and these kids are traveling solo across uh, two or three countries, and when they get here, they're reunited with your, the families. 
And uh, to me, that, 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 that's mind blowing because uh, you can't do that as a United States citizen. You can't send your, your five year old kid to, to ride on top of a train through three states and when they get there, they're coming back to you. You'd get prosecuted. Yet uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, uh, illegal families, we, we put on the, the, the kid gloves with them and we don't, we don't look out for the best interest of this child. And that's another thing that needs to be changed. Sure. Chris Cabrera, as a Border Patrol agent, uh, we just haven't heard from as many of you all, and I appreciate you coming on live national TV to explain what your job is like and enforcing it and also just what you see in being a father. I appreciate you. I appreciate your voice. Thank you. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you.